So let's imagine the following use case. Your client is a fast food chain and they ask you to write a program which is going to display order IDs like this on the monitor. And every time the order has been served, they want you to remove this order from the monitor. For that, we have a function called remove first order, which is going to remove the order from the very beginning of the list, all right? And what this function does is basically array.shift, which is going to remove the first element from an array and return it. But then we also return the array itself, all right? And here we're using TypeScript to make our life easier. And we have an array of numbers as an input parameter type, and we have array of numbers as a return type. So we're expecting the same type of an array. But let's say your client adds a new requirement and your client says, well, we don't only want to display numbers or be able to display numbers, but also the meal names. So let's say we have a burger, we have a can have soda, and we can also have, let's say fries, All right? I'm gonna delete this one, we don't need it. And now your program suddenly breaks. Why? Because type string is not assignable to type number, meaning we are expecting an array of numbers, but we're providing an array of strings. So what can you do in this case? The first option is to copy this function and call it something else and then put a, an array of strings. But this is code duplication, so we want to avoid this. The second option is to use any, and this is kind of gonna fix our problem, but not really. First of all, as you may know, yen any is an anti-pattern, so you shouldn't be using any in any circumstance, right? Why? Because we are going to lose the information along the way. We're accepting, we can accept a number or an array of numbers and then do something here, something wrong. For example, for some reason, our program might convert an array of numbers to a string like this and we might not even be aware of this and it's gonna break, right? So you shouldn't be using any in this case. So what can we do in this case, right? Of course, generics. We can use generics to help us with this. So at the moment, let's bring the numbers back and make sure that our program is failing with errors. So how do you use generics? First of all, you need to add a type to your function here. So a generic type would look something like this and you put a T here. Well, why T? It's basically a convention. You can also use type like this, or you can use K, or you can use anything, but usually you would use T so that it's descriptive and your teammates or your colleagues understand what's happening here if they're already familiar with generics. All right, so what next? Well, now we're accepting some kind of a type variable here and we can use it later in our code or in our function like this. And I'm gonna change this number to T as well. And now whatever type we are passing as a variable is going to be reused later. So it's the same T and this is also the same T. And in our function here, we basically need to provide a type for it. So obviously these are numbers. So I'm going to say number like this. And here I'm going to say string like this. So we're passing a number as a type here, and then our function knows that it accepts the list of numbers and it returns the list of numbers. Same thing with the string. It accepts the string and a array of strings of a, as, a, as an input and returns it. And now, as you can see, our function is super reusable. We can give different types of inputs and it's not going to break. And one cool thing is that TypeScript is clever. So you don't really need to explicitly pass it here. So you can delete this and delete this too. And TypeScript already understands it from your input. So as long as you're passing a number, TypeScript is gonna say, okay, I see that they are passing a number inside the array. So I'm going to make sure that this is also a number. As you can see, it's the same with the string. And you can of course declare a, like a default type. You can also say, that it's a string, just like with default parameters, as you know from ES6, you can have default types. And now if you, for example, don't pass anything here, it's going to know that by default, it should have a type string. All right, so this is when it comes to functions, but turns out that you can use generics with pretty much everything. And I wanna show you all the useful use cases that you might come across 
and so that you know how to use them in your own code. So I'm going to comment this out because we no longer need it. And I have some more code here. So let's take a look what's happening here. Turns out you can also use generics with interfaces. So let's say we have an interface burger and it has a size, which is a string and a price, which is a number. And we have a constant called meal and it takes the shape of a burger. So what if our burger is now uh, different? So the size can be a large, right? Price can be a 10. But what if our client says that, you know, we're switching from the words or strings to a numerical representation of a size. So one, two, three, three being the large. So now we have to change it to three and suddenly our basically variable breaks because number is not assignable to string. Size has to be string. So what can we do here? Again, use generics. So I'm going to say T like this, and I'm going to change the size from string to T. And now what? Why is it failing? Generic requires one argument. Oh, exactly. So <laughs> almost forgot. Since we are using an interface, you need to explicitly pass the type here like this. So I'm going to say string and oh, sorry, number, I mean, and voila, we have a number passed here like this. T is basically a number now and it's assigned to the size property. How cool is that? And let's take a look at the class. We have a burger class and we are passing, uh, we're basically creating a new instance of the burger. But let's say we have the same scenario and now we want to pass a number, but it's going to fail because we are accepting a string. Actually, let me keep this and I'm going to create a new use case where this has to be a number. So let's say burger two. So this is going to fail obviously because it's a string. And if I change this to a number and this two, then the first one is going to fail. So what do we do again? Generics going to declare T here and I'm going to use T here. And of course I'm going to use T here. And now this is flexible. It can accept a string large or it can accept a number. So this is basically it when it comes to generics. I hope you enjoyed this episode and smash like and subscribe so that you don't miss any future video. Hey there, it's me again. I just wanted to quickly say thank you very much for watching this video and smashing the like button. And if you want to stay up to date with such cool topics, make sure you subscribe so that you don't miss whenever a new video is out. And I'm going to see you in the next one.